Well, it's a great privilege to come and to worship tonight, to lead you in this, as we come and recognise that Jesus is Lord, hallelujah, that the Father has been so gracious and precious to us to send his Son into this world to die for our sins. And we're here because of him tonight, aren't we? Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for his presence. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice, and the blossom abundantly, and rejoice, even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands, and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with the recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness waters break out and streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, in the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And a an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness, the unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I want to pose this question to you tonight. Are you a Zionist? We've just been singing actually about Zion, haven't we? Are you a Zionist? If your answer is yes, then you're going against the flow. Current world opinion seems to be hostile towards Zionism because of the geopolitical climate today. So then let's take a look at the subject. As a political idealistic movement, Zionism rose to popularity amongst Jews in the late 1800s. Names like Herzl, and Dreyfus come to mind, and some of you may better understand than I do about the uh, difficulties and the comings and goings in setting up a homeland in the Holy Land centred on Jerusalem. <clears throat> Even the British government in 1917 was sympathetic. And I want to read to you what the Foreign Minister of the day said in his letter to Lord Rothschild. Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you on behalf of His Majesty's government the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the Cabinet. His Majesty's government view with favour the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavours to facilitate the achievement of this object. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration 
to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation, signed by Arthur James Balfour. And so in 1948, modern Israel was revived, taking up parts of its ancient homeland allotted to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob by God Almighty. And since the 40s, the culture has burgeoned and indeed prospered, despite the perpetual display of violent hatred and open hostility being meted out against Israel and the Jew. My concern today is to focus on the spiritual and biblical dimensions of Zion. I turn to Strong's Concordance and it gives a, 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 an explanation of the name there, going back to the original Zion. As a permanent capital, it says, a mountain of Jerusalem, Zion. The Greek version of Zion, which is with an S there, which I'll come on to, um, is of Hebrew origin. Uh, Hill of Jerusalem, figuratively, and this is interesting, figuratively, the church militant and or triumphant. So, interestingly then, the word Zion, with a Z, occurs 153 times in the King James Bible. And that number might ring a bell. It's reminiscent of the fish caught by the disciples at Jesus' behest after his resurrection. So there may be something in Strong's assertion as to the figurative meaning of it being the church, uh, i.e. the fish <laughs> being the church being caught in the net. We, we know that the kingdom of heaven uh, is as a dragnet. Hallelujah. Now, Zion is found in the Old Testament, while Zion, with an S, is found nine times in scriptures, twice in the Old, seven times in the New. There is, therefore, a seamless interchange between Zion, with a Z, or Zion, with an S. So, to dive into an understanding of the subject, I'm loosely using Nave's topical Bible to explain what Zion is all about. And the first occurrence is found in 2 Samuel chapter 5. I'll read a few verses from this. And the king, this is verse 6, and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. Uh, nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. And David said on that day, Whoso getteth up to the gutter, and smiteth the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind, that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore, they say, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort, and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo, and inward. Zion then was the stronghold of Jerusalem, taken from the Jebusites. It's quite interesting in our reading, it talked about the um, lame and the blind. Let me just uh, refresh myself here with this. Verse 5, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, and then the lame shall, man shall leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. So this aspect of, of uh, sort of like disability, if I can call it that, uh, is referenced in that reading in Isaiah and also in the taking that David did of this uh, hill fortress uh, just uh, in, in, I believe it's part of the range of, the, of, of Mount Moriah there in the southern part there. And he called it, of course, it was Zion, but he called it the City of David, something then to take note of. And so after David's conquest, then Zion was called the City of David. Places can be known by different names at different 
times. Of course, this is, can be confusing. Some years ago, uh, we had a family holiday to Russia and we stayed several nights in Leningrad. Now, in 1703, the city was founded as St. Petersburg. 1914, it was renamed Petrograd. After 10 years, it was renamed Leningrad. And in 1991, and up to the now, its original name has been restored, St. Petersburg. So, back to Zion. The Ark of the Covenant was placed there. Just referencing here, 1 Chronicles 15, verse 1. David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the Ark of God and pitched for it a tent. However, it was removed from Zion to Solomon's temple. And again, we find that in 2 Chronicles chapter 5. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the elders, heads of the tribes and chief of the fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Verse 5, and they brought up the Ark and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. These did the priests and the Levites bring up. Now, as an aside, Bearing in mind that the ark was a specific place where God met or tabernacled with his people, with the removal of the ark and the tent or tabernacle, there remain, there's emptiness now, isn't there, in the city of David, a vacant spot, as it were, where the ark was. However, there is also hope because in Amos 9, verse 11, it says, in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and build it as in the days of old. The resting place now vacated becomes the fallen tabernacle of David. The Reverend David Gardner, Trumpet Sounds of Britain fame, uh, brought up this subject with me privately on several occasions, asking me what an explanation this verse in Amos and also it's repeated in Acts chapter 15 verse 16 I had to confess I had no satisfactory explanation of it and today even after further thought I'm reticent to be dogmatic but I can conjecture what does this mean is it the rebuilding of a physical structure or is it the restoration, and possibly the same thing, uh, together as it were, uh, the restoration of a broken family, even King David himself returning to reign in the millennium? Some people think that uh, when it refers to King David on the throne in the millennium, that that means the Lord Jesus. Well, um, as I say, I'm not dogmatic about these things, but it does feed our thoughts, doesn't it, as to how these things might be. But we look forward to this time, and one day we shall know. Hallelujah. So continuing what we do know about Zion, we have several biblical references as to the place, the forms, and the assemblies of the Israelitish worship. And in 2 Kings 19, we have this reference, 21. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him, and to him is Sennacherib, the enemy who came up against uh, Israel here. The virgin daughter of Zion has despised thee and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at thee. So I say this was concerning the enemies of Sennacherib. Daughter of Zion, daughter of Jerusalem. We'll look at that in, a, in a, just a moment. But we have other uh, references here, a selection of psalms, uh, verses from the psalms here. Sing praises to the Lord who, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. 
Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed, this Mount Zion wherein thou hast dwelt. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish her. And lastly, last reference here, for the Lord hath chosen Zion, he hath desired it for his habitation. One could go on with uh, lots of references about Zion, because it does figure so much. Well, I've said 153 times uh, in the uh, in the authorised there. Just uh, another one here from Isaiah 52 this time. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thy, the, the uncircumcised and, or the, and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself. From the hands of, from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Are, are we getting some understanding now of what Zion is about? What it features and its characteristics are. Well, it's a hill stronghold with towers. It's a desirable dwelling place of the Lord. A family home, having sons and daughters. As mentioned earlier, Zion is not just Old Testament. So let's look at a, a few references in the New Testament, shall we? Uh, John 12. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. And then a couple in Romans here. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion, a stumbling stone and a rock of offence. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So from the various scriptures already quoted, it's clear that the name Zion can be widened to apply uh, to um, Jerusalem. Again, this is borne out in Isaiah and Zechariah here. Again, I'll read this couple of references because this is a context. Look upon Zion. The city of our solemnities, thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be broken down. Not one of her stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. In Zechariah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus says the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. I hope we're benefiting from this look at Zion. It is significant and important to God and it should be also to us as well. So continue on then. It's called the city of God. It's called the city of David. Now it's called the city of God. Psalms and Isaiah I'm reading from. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. They shall, all they that are despised shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So we cannot fail to see the personal interest and delight that God showers on Zion. Not only in the past, from King David's time, but throughout the scriptures, it's recorded how God dotes, if I can express God's feelings in such a human term, he dotes over Zion, even into the future, with the promise of restoration. 
Again, a couple of references from Isaiah 51 and 52. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden. And her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up thy voice. With the voice together they shall sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. So to conclude then, in response to my original question, are you a Zionist? You can answer positively if you're looking for a physical homeland in the here and now. However, Zion should figure in the Christian's aspiration for our response depends upon our relationship with God. If you're a Christian, a believer and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, then the answer is yes. And the reason being so positive an emphasis is because God is there. He dwells in Zion. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is there. My personal testimony is that I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and Jesus will bring me to dwell with him as he promised in John's Gospel, John 14. And in my Father's house, many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place to you. And if I go and prepare a place to you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. So, from Zion being the city of David, We've seen that Zion is the city of God. And now finally, we see that Zion is the city of the redeemed. Again, two references here, Hebrews and Revelation. Chapter 12 of Hebrews. But you come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Revelation 14, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, with him an 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So in closing, did you notice from our reading in Isaiah 35, verse 8, there is a highway called the highway of holiness, with Zion being its destination. I believe Zion has a millennial dimension as well as an eternal reality in its association with the heavenly Jerusalem. My prayer is that all hearing this message, if you've not already done so, will respond to God with a broken and contrite heart, confessing your sin to Almighty God, believing in Jesus to save you, even unto eternal life, to walk with the redeemed along the way of holiness to Zion, to dwell forever with the Lord. May the Lord bless those few thoughts to our heart this morning, this evening. We're going to be singing as a final hymn, a lovely hymn of affirmation. We're marching to Zion.